Why do these bizarre techniques practiced by entire dojos of students appeal to so many? And why do they seem to work when the master practices them on his students? And how on earth do these masters delude themselves that they work? Well, the psychology of no-touch knockouts has a lot to do with Dillman's comment on being a non-believer. It turns out, if you're a believer, you likely will be knocked down by these no-touch attacks. In fact, Dillman has convinced dozens of students that he can knock them down and out without ever touching them. It's remarkably similar to techniques employed by gangs, religions and cults. That is, vulnerable people are offered safety and a sense of belonging. The more they invest their lives into the group, the more they double down on their belief, the more it becomes part of their identity. This leads to a complete lack of questioning of the master and the tradition, an increasing reliance on the group and its training, and an increased alienation from real life. Moral, social and dress codes are enforced, and rival groups are talked about like their enemies. Perhaps most interesting of all is that when people in these groups are confronted with a reality that disproves the group's premise, they don't renounce it, they simply double down on their beliefs. This results in two things. One, the fake martial arts practitioner becomes completely compliant to the nonsense techniques and lets himself get flung around by psychic powers. And two, the master comes to believe his own nonsense. And as is the case of Yanagi Ryoken, living out a power fantasy kept alive by vulnerable people who are easily manipulated until he ends up having a brutal reunion with reality. These masters are no more than con men who got fooled by their own con.